Hi, my name is Romujit. Welcome to my channel. This is our first video on SCCM and there will be series of video on it. Little bit on my background. I am having 8 years of experience in IT field supporting Windel, VMware, Configuration Manager and Cloud. In this video we will see step by step method on how to install and configure Active Directory in a Windows Server 2019 standard edition operating system for our Configuration Manager. First we will install Active Directory Domain Services ADDS role in our test lab. Then install and configure Dynamic Host Control Protocol role. So our lab systems will discover IP address automatically. Next create a container and extend Active Directory schema for our SCCM lab setup. Schema extension is required to publish our Configuration Manager site over Active Directory so that Active Directory computers can trust the information retrieved from the site servers. Also Configuration Manager clients can automatically find the SCCM management points through Active Directory publishing using an LDAP query to our global catalog provider server. If you do not extend schema for our configuration manager site, it will enable to publish site information data and we need to perform other mechanism to locate management point information to our configuration manager clients. Configuration manager uses Active Directory domain services for service location, security configuration and to discover the users, groups and devices that we want to manage. So let's start and install ADDS. To install ADDS, go to server manager dashboard console and click on add roles and features option. The server is currently on workgroup and having a static IP address of 192.168.0.200. Click on next. Save the installation type as default and click on next. Leave as default and click on next. On roles tab, select active directory and domain services and click on add features option. Then click on next. On features tab, leave it as default. Click on next. Now click on next. Review the selection and then click on install. It will start the installation. Let's wait for some time to complete this installation. Once it is successfully installed, you will see this screen. Click on promote this server option and it will open the Active Directory Domain Services Configuration Wizard. As there is no domain exist in our network, hence we need to select add a new forest. We will use hynh.in as a domain name in our lab setup. Click on next. Provide the DSRM password and do remember it because it can be required if we perform any restoration using directory service restored mode. Click on next, next and it will start verifying the netbar's name over the network. Click on next. Specify the location of ADDS database, log files and sysvar. By default, these are stored in these locations. In our case, we will store this data as default and click on next. Review the selection. Click on next. And it will start the project chain. Verify the results. If any error reported, review it and perform the step to rectify it. Once passed, Click on install. Once the installation completed, our domain controller will be rebooted automatically. And we can see our system's fully qualified domain name has changed to dc.hynh.in, which is a part of our hynh.in domain. Alright, it looks like our server is going to reboot. 
Let's search for some time. Currently it is applying the settings as we can see. Alright, our domain controller is online now. Let's log in to our domain controller. We have successfully logged in to our domain controller now. Let's verify the server's fully qualified domain name now. To see it, click on the local server option, click on domain. See the name has been changed to dc.hynh.in close it let's check whether our dns server is running properly or not to check it open powershell and type ns local followed by host name we will check with ip address as well See, name registration is not happening properly. To resolve these errors, follow these steps to configure the DNS name registration properly. First, open network connection using ncq.cpl command. Go to properties. Select IPv4. Go to properties. Again, see our network router is having loopback IP address at our DNS IP section. Remove it and put 192.168.0.200 as our DNS service is running on the same domain controller. Click on OK and close the properties wizard. Now, we will configure the DNS server's reverse lookup zone for IP2 name resolution. To configure it, open DNS console from tool section. Once manager, DNS manager console opens, expand DNS, DC, reverse lookup zone on left hand side and right click on reverse lookup zone. Select new zone. Click on next. Leave default and click on next. Click on next. Next. Put the network ID and click on next, next, and finish. Our reverse lookup zone is now created. Now we will create a pointer record to point our system's IP address to our system hostname. To create a PTI record inside reverse lookup zone, expand the reverse lookup zone name, then click on reverse lookup zone name, right click on it and select new pointer. Now browse for host name, double click on it and select the system name. Review it and click on OK. A new PTI record will be created under reverse lookup zone now. Now let's verify. If our system's name resolution is working properly or not using nslookup command. See it's working now. Let's check with the IP address. Alright, our DNS server is working fine. Once a new system joins to hynh.in domain, it will create a new point a record and a record automatically inside DNS zones. Next, we will install DHCP role on our domain controller system. DHCP allows the server to dynamically distribute IP address and configuration information to client system. To install DHCP role, log server manager, click add roles and features option. Click on next, leave it as default and click on next, select DHCP role and click on next, click on next, next and install. 
Once the DHCP rule is installed successfully, we need to perform some mandated task to complete the configuration. Let's wait for some time to complete this installation. Click on Complete DHCP Configuration option. Launch the DHCP Post Install Configuration Console. Click on Next. On the authorization tab, leave it as default and click on Commit to complete the DC post installation task. Verify the summary tab and close the console now. Now we will create a DC scope. A scope is a range of IP addresses assigned to computers requesting a dynamic IP address. Open DHCP console. Right click on IPv4, click on new scope, click on next, fill the scope name and description, click on next, provide the new scope start and end IP range as the screen. and click on next. We are not providing any DHCP exclusion in our network so leaving it blank and click on next. Click on next. Click on next. Provide the DHCP gateway IP address so client can use the gateway for communication. Click on add. Click on next. Leave DNS service details as default and click on next we are not going to configure wins in our network click on next next and click on finish to complete see a new scope has been created with a range of IP address 192.168.0.230 to 250 with a subnet mask slash 24 we will create system management container and extend the AD schema to publish site information over Active Directory. Open ADSI console to create the system management container. Click on ADSI edit. Click on connect to to connect the server. Use the default name in context and click on OK. Do not change anything here. Expand default name in context. Expand DC. Select CN is equal to system. Right click on it, select object type as container from the list and click on next. Type the object name same as system management and click on next and finish. We can see now a new container object cn equals to system management is created under sin equals to system after creating the system management container in active directory domain services you must grant the site server's computer account permission that are required to publish site information to the container right click on cn equals to system management click on properties go to security tab click on advanced Click on add, click on select a principle, click on object types, check computers, click on ok and put the computer name as SCM PRI01 which we are using in our lab. Click on check names and click on ok. We will allow this site server with full control permission and make sure it applies to this object and all descendant objects. Now click on OK and close this wizard to complete the security provisioning.
you can extend the active directory schema before or after configuration manager current branch setup. It is recommended to extend the schema before you run the configuration manager setup. I have already copied the setup file in my network server. Let's access the setup and extend the schema. Go to SMS setup, bin, x64, and search for exta dsch and right click on it and run as a different admin. Make sure the account which you are running is a member of schema admin group. Once the schema successfully extended, we can see the log file under the root directory of the system. You should see the line successfully extended the active directory schema in the log file. That's all from today's video. See you in next. Thank you.